for today's sermon please turn to the gospel according to john chapter 3 verses 19 to 21 and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for every one that do as evil hate the light neither come to the light lest his deeds should be reproved but he that do a truth come to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in god may lord add his blessings to the reading of his word let us look to the lord one more time in prayer as we meditate upon this portion let us pray heavenly father we come to thy presence again seeking thy blessings for the ministry of the word lord speak to us may the word encourage us edify us and help us to even receive the corrections and the reproofs offered through the word and may we by the help of the spirit apply these truths in our life lord help us to be focused on the hearing of god's word lord take away all our vain thoughts distractions and may our minds and hearts be focused on thy word as we receive it lord be with me as i divide thy word guard my tongue guard my thoughts but we pray that we all will be edified by the preaching of god's word we ask in jesus precious name amen we already heard about the condemnation that we are in especially in the previous verses which we meditated on the lost day the word of the lord says those who don't believe they are already under a condemnation from god so if you are not believing in lord jesus you are a vessel prepared for condemnation and here in this word that we heard today in this verses we hear about this word condemnation again here it says and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil and again that word is used and this is a condemnation that light is come into the world so this condemnation is talking about the condemnation are waiting us particularly because of rejecting christ the gospel is offered to us the light came to this earth we heard the truth of the gospel we heard about christ but yet we chose to reject christ so if we are out of christ if we purposefully or willfully reject gospel reject the message of christ reject the truth what awaits us is condemnation and what are the causes because we reject christ so we choose to be in condemnation what are the reasons we choose to continue in the state of condemnation and here itself in the portion we read itself the word of the lord says because we are in darkness since we are in darkness we choose to ignore christ we choose to live in a way that ends up in condemnation so we live in the way of darkness that way leads to condemnation that way ends in getting judgment from god the word darkness i think you are familiar even in our day to day life there is a season of light and a season of darkness in our everyday life in the word of the lord also many times the scripture talks to us about darkness at least there are three ways in which the word of the lord describes about darkness there may be more but we will meditate upon three aspects of uh, darkness that the word of the lord describes us and since we are in darkness we deserve condemnation so what are the three major aspects of darkness described in the scriptures the first there is a darkness of evil there is a darkness of evil even in the verse which we read today the word of the lord tells us clearly that men loved darkness 
rather than light because their deeds were evil so there is a darkness of evil described in the bible so what is this darkness of evil we choose to rebel against god and we choose to live in sin in every day of our life we do things that are not pleasing in the sight of god and we find happiness and joy in doing evil things in committing sin let us turn to the book of romans chapter 13 the word of the lord there also talks about this type of darkness romans chapter 13 verses 12 and 13 here the word of the lord reads this way the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light and what are the ways of darkness mentioned in the next verse let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting drunkenness not in chambering wantonness not in strife and envy all these are the works of darkness we live in these things engaging in these areas of our life where we rebel against god enjoy the pleasures of this world we are living in darkness we are engaging in sin we are enjoying sin and we live in darkness sometimes when we think about sinful things in this world we may think oh it is bringing much happiness to me and it is good and i am i am feeling happy doing this all my friends and others who enjoy the company of evil men they also like doing evil things but in the sight of god you are living in darkness you are entertaining things of darkness it may bring pleasure to you but it you live in darkness waiting for that day of condemnation and some people they like to particularly love the evil things of darkness and that's one feature of darkness right where we think that nobody will see us and people have a special liking some have a special liking for evil things done at the night time even in other portions of the scripture word of the lord particularly addresses such sins sins which we people commit at night time thinking that nobody will know what they are doing so in the daylight they are afraid to do sin because they are scared of others they may catch us or they may do they may comment bad things about us or maybe our parents may see us so you don't want to be embarrassed in front of others thus you have a special liking for evil things particularly during night time and many engage in sins of prostitution this is a sin where uh, many don't like to do it in broad daylight that brings shame to them so they like to do that at night time and many sexual sins that people engage in they don't want to do it in daylight because of the shame and maybe they think about what others may say about it if they are caught so they like to engage in such sexual sins especially in darkness and in this age we have easy access to such things such evil things because of social media mobile phones nobody may know what you are watching or what you are seeing in the night time when nobody is around you find pressure in such kinds of sin you are engaging in those sins in darkness thinking that nobody is seeing but all such sins are naked in the sight of the lord lord can see us we are living in darkness engaging in such sins but it's all open in front of god's eyes 
and all such things will be brought to daylight. There is a day where we need to give an account for all such secret sins that we engage in. We lived in darkness thinking that nobody saw it and engaged in it. But there is a day where the Lord will bring that to light. And after that, what awaits us? The Lord will punish us for engaging in such evil things. How shameful it is to fall into the hands of God and get the punishment or condemnation awaiting us because we are engaging in the evil things of darkness where we entertain the sins of darkness. The another way in which the word of the Lord talks about darkness is our mind is darkened. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. Let us turn to that portion. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. The word of the Lord reads this way. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. So people live in blindness. Their mind is darkened. And who darkens their mind? Devil. The devil is the one who blinded the minds of them. And they follow the God of this world. They are darkened by the devil and they are also agents of the devil. We, we speak to them about truth. We speak to them about Christ. They don't want to listen because their mind is already darkened. They naturally have a hatred towards spiritual things. They cannot understand it. They cannot grasp it. Sometimes people like to hear about Christ but then they want to reject it. Where they even use their mind, thinking capacity, even the intellect that the Lord has given, the gifts that the Lord has given, to go against Christ. So it's a kind of darkness where they are not foolish people. They engage their mind. They have gifts of thinking, the power to understand things. But still they use their intellect and mind all to go against Christ. Many atheists are like that. There, there were times where people who believe in God used to be fools. You know, we may think, oh, they, they don't have much understanding. They are not educated. That's why they are not following God. But gone are such days. Now, many who claim to be atheists, they are very, very educated people. Some famous scientists or uh, many who uh, have the capacity to learn. So they do have intellectual capacities, good skills, talents. They might have contributed so to the society in various good ways. But still they use their mind. The abilities that the Lord has given to reason against God. Because their mind is darkened by the devil. They can see all the things of this world and make sense of it. They can do a lot of things and invent for the benefit of the society. In all things, they may use their mind in a good way. But when it comes to spiritual things, their mind is darkened. And they chose to ignore and go against Christ and the truth that is revealed in the gospel. And even for such people, the word of the Lord very clearly says, they also await a condemnation from God. Because God is the one who created us. And God is the one who gave us the ability to think, the ability to study. God is the one who gave us the natural talents. And if we don't use it for God's glory, but we use it to reason against God, acting as an agent of the devil, we need to give an answer to the one who created us. And when we stand in front of that creator, the Lord will definitely condemn, condemn us if we are not following him. And if we live in this type of darkness where our mind is darkened. 
and the bible also talks about spiritual darkness all who live in sinful life all whose mind is darkened they all live in a spiritual darkness and what is spiritual darkness spiritual darkness is a darkness where we live without christ without the illumination of the holy spirit in our hearts let us turn to colossians chapter 1 verse 13 Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 13 Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son So here we can see some who were part of the kingdom of this world who were under the power of darkness they were delivered from it and they were made to be part of the kingdom of God so all those who are outside of christ all those who are outside of the kingdom of lord jesus they are all living in darkness they are under the power of darkness they are living in a spiritual darkness holy spiritual man can discern spiritual things so if you are outside of christ and the holy spirit hasn't worked in your hearts to transform your heart to understand what Christ did for us how we can be saved we live in spiritual darkness and what is awaiting for such people since we live in darkness we await condemnation that's what we read in the verse which we read and those who live in spiritual darkness many of them they reject christ even after knowing about christ even after knowing christ is light verse 19 and this is a condemnation for those who live in spiritual darkness that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light christ already came to this world the lord revealed the truth to us the lord shone his light through lord jesus to us yet they choose to live in darkness here it says rather they chose to live in darkness they loved darkness rather than light for such men we have to say greater condemnation awaits us because you you know about christ you might you may be living in a christian family or in a church where gospel is announced day in day out you hear about christ you grew up in families where word of god is read prayers are offered every day yet you chose to choose darkness rather than light and the word of the lord reminds us in many portions of the scripture greater is the condemnation for such men because we have tasted heavenly things we have tasted heavenly blessings we lived in the atmosphere of the light we were not totally living in darkness we were maybe part of the church the rays of the light were around you tasted many blessings coming through the church even spiritual blessings in an outward way covenant blessings that comes through the church and even to christian families yet you chose to walk in darkness yet you chose to reject christ word of the lord reminds us greater is our condemnation if we choose darkness even after tasting some blessings that comes through church or through the ministry of god's word so let us be careful not to reject christ particularly if the gospel is offered to us in one way or other maybe through your families friends or even through the ministry of the church and the word of the lord again goes on it says verse 20 for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved so some of them they 
continue in their state of darkness because they are scared that their deeds will be reproved what they do will come to light and they cannot continue in the things that they are engaged in the things that they enjoy by living in this world of darkness by following the devil and the things of this world so they choose to remain in that state of darkness but then there is hope for us offered through the light that comes to lord jesus the lord brought light to us so that the children of darkness can can come and be the children of light and that hope is offered in verse 21 he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in god so the lord didn't abandon us in darkness we were men who were prepared for the day of condemnation but the lord had mercy on us the lord don't want to abandon us in that state of condemnation or in that state of darkness the lord want us to be out of it the lord don't want you to abandon living in sins of darkness some they like doing certain sins and they enjoy the pleasure of it but they say oh i am hopeless i tried various ways to come out of this sin but it's not happening i i tried stopping of the certain habits maybe i tried doing certain techniques it's all not working again the devil is coming with his tactics and then again i am going back to that sin there are many who complain and many who try to have a fight with sin in that way with their own power but they net fail and they go back to their their sins again and continue in the sins that are engaging but dear congregation no you have hope you can come out of such sins that's why the lord sent his son he is light in him you can find true deliverance in him you can find victory go to him in him light is offered to us you go to him if you come to that true light the word of the lord assures us that he is able to lead us into light this is not something that we can accomplish by our own power and that's why here is very clearly written in the last part that they are wrought in god it is a work of god that the lord brings you to light god causes you to come to light and that light is offered to us in lord jesus and that's what we heard in the last week god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but will have everlasting life that's the only way we can come out of darkness look to christ put your faith in lord jesus christ you can be out of the evil that you engage in in darkness you can be out of the darkness of your mind or you will be transformed out of the spiritual darkness you were in and brought to the kingdom of light the kingdom of lord jesus and you do that by exercising faith in the light that is offered to us in lord jesus in him is true light and that's the only way you can be out of the darkness of this world there is no other way that's why jesus said i am the way the truth and the light it is the only way there is no other name given under heaven so that you can come out of all the sins and the ways of darkness confess your sins acknowledge your sins and go to him putting faith in him and he transforms us he takes us from the ways of darkness 
from the kingdom of the devil and brings us to the way of light. It is something that the Lord accomplishes in us. It is something that the Lord brings us, brings in us, works in us. Let us look to that light revealed in Lord Jesus, who is the true light, who is the one who can deliver us from darkness. And not only that, once you come to this light, now you live as the children of the day. Earlier, the works of darkness were manifested in your life. But once you come to Lord Jesus Christ and put your faith in Him, you become the children of the light. What will be manifested in your life? The works of the light. The word of the Lord very clearly says in verse 21, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest. The good deeds that we do as children of the light. The good works that the Lord accomplishes in us by the work of the Holy Spirit. That will be made manifest. And even others can testify of that when they see us. We were once walking away from Christ. We were living in darkness. But once we taste the light coming through Lord Jesus, our life will be transformed. And what we do, what we think, the way we talk, all will be transformed by the power of the gospel that comes through Lord Jesus. Have you experienced that transformation in your life? Or are you still living in darkness? If you are truly a child of light, the works of the day, the works of God will be manifested in us. And that's the purpose for which the Lord called us and separated us. To be a light in this evil world. To be a light of this world. And we must be shining for Christ. If we are brought out of darkness and brought into the light, we are small lights for Christ in this world. Where even others can see the good works that outflows from us and glorify God and testify of the goodness that we have in Christ because we have received light and that light has totally transformed us. How wonderful it is to be the children of the light where we can manifest the light that we received even to others. And what is the nature of the light? The light spreads even to more places which are in darkness. And when the light comes, normally the darkness goes away. And that's the calling that we have to send this light to faraway places where many who live in darkness can be brought to light by the preaching of the gospel. And that's how we can be a light of this world. Many who live in darkness, many who are waiting for condemnation can be brought to the true light of salvation and they can be part of the kingdom of God. Dear congregation, as a believer, we should consider it as a great privilege to send this light that we have received in Christ, even far and wide, so that many, many who have never known Christ, many who never heard about Christ can come to know about Him and put faith in Him. Now, to live in the darkness of this world is too, too miserable. Those who find satisfaction in sin, those who find joy in doing sin, even them, after some time, they realize that it's all futile. It's all in vain. And they come to an understanding even that there is no, no fulfillment in engaging or entertaining the works of the darkness. That's the reality of the life. So it should be a privilege that we can go to such men who 
live in the blindness of this world who live in total darkness and bring them out of the out of that darkness and bring them to gospel light and make them the children of light and when that happens not only really that their spiritual life is changed even their mind even the other aspects of their life will be transformed by the work of the gospel it is not only something that transforms our heart and our souls it has implications for everything that we engage in our day to day life it may be our family life it may be the way we work in our workplaces it may be the way we do our studies or the way we conduct ourselves in schools or campuses all this will be changed by the power of this gospel light that transformed us and that's the way in which we became a light to this world where why we came to the truth and we came to the true light and that light transforms us and transforms even others around us so may we as a church continue to proclaim the good news of the lord jesus and announce to this dark world that only in christ we have true light and bring many who are perishing and many who are awaiting condemnation because of the darkness out of that pits of darkness to the paths of light may the lord bless us with these words